so what, what I'm, uh, the use case scenario here that I'm going to show um, is how we use actually, how we propagate the VRF feature uh, through uh, mix and match stacking. Right, so um, VRF, you know, obviously it's a pretty advanced layer 3 feature that is only supported on high-end layer 3 switchers. Right, and here, we are going to be able to support VRF on entry-level switchers such as the ICX 6450. So little use case scenarios, I mean, mo some of you guys might be familiar with VRF, others might not, so I've just put this very simple use case scenario to explain sort of the benefit of VRF and uh, the value you're getting through uh, mix and match stacking, uh, pro VRF propagated through uh, mix and match stacking, right? So here this is a little shopping mall, um, and the, the network admin in the shopping mall is sort of offering connectivity for each of the store, but obviously, you want the store to be completely isolated from a you know, traffic perspective, right? You don't want the Microsoft store to be connecting to the Apple store in the same mall. <laughs> Just look at what's the upcoming announcement, right? So um, here we actually have, per store, we created two VLANs, one for presumably in the shop to connect all the equipment and the laptops, and one presumably in the basement to connect the, the servers so that each shop has a set of laptop or set of servers here. And the network admin wanted to really simplify IP management here, and uh, what he did is that he actually assigned the same IP range to all the stores. So um, the, the VLAN that has all the laptop, the client, it is this IP range, and on the servers, it's uh, another IP range, but they all have the same configuration. So obviously when you route, when each store is gonna route between the client and the server, you're gonna need virtual instances for routing. Right? Uh, a single routing instances is not able to route through overlapping IP addresses, IP ranges. So, um, uh, and in this case, because it's a shopping mall, you don't want to over invest in, in, in uh, very expensive high-end layer three switches at the edge. So uh, that enables them to actually buy inexpensive switches at the edge and still get that VRF capability. All right, so does that, does that make sense? You know, as a use case, pretty simple. You know, you essentially you have to create virtual routing instances to be one per store to be able to route between two VLANs that have uh, the same IP, IP ranges per store, right? So, let me go to the next slide. I don't know if it's, I can read that, but this is, so this is, we've actually replicated that on that rack here, where I have 26610 and 466450s stacked together. And I've, do, I've created actually four VLANs, um, two VLANs for um, what I'm gonna call a tea store, and two VLANs for a wine store, a wine shop, which are in the same mall. Right, so I have uh, VLAN 10 and 11 here uh, for the uh, one store and 20 and 21 for the T store. And each of the VLAN, I have um, attached a physical port to the VLAN and then a virtual interface for routing between VLANs. Pretty simple configuration, yeah. And then the next slide, I'm showing uh, that VLAN 10 and 11 actually routed through the red VRF in, uh, instance, you can see that in the last column here, and VLAN 20 and 21 are routed through the blue VRF instance that we had on that. Uh, so now I'll go back to this, and I think it's all working now. And what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to connect a laptop here to a port in the T in the tea shop and connect to, I have actually set up web servers on each of those laptops, one for the wine store, one for the tea store. They have you know, a, a different easily identifiable homepage. And I'm gonna connect a laptop to a port in the wine shop and connect to the server and we'll see what homepage comes up. And then same in the tea shop. So, 
This is my client. And actually, I am going to connect it. I'm not sure how many of you can actually see, but uh, the 66 tens are connected to the 6450s over at the bottom here. The other 10 big link. So we could actually, at lunchtime, I could actually uh, yeah. show a little more uh, about the physical configuration of that, that rack. There we go. Pull a few cables, see what's up. All right, so this is a white cable connected to a 6450, this is port number 11 on the third switch here. And I'm going to connect this to the laptop. And I am going to essentially type the address of the server here, which is 11, 11, 11, 2. And I'm getting the home page of the T-Store. And I'm going to disconnect that, drop, and get the blue cable here, which is connected to the wine stall. And then just do a refresh. All right. I think it's still in the cache in the browser. Let's do a ship refresh. Oops. Am I on the right cable here? It was working a minute ago. <laughs> I swear. We know about the parallel. Hit the play button. Live demos or live demo traffic exactly. I tried this. Say, do a demo lose the sale? Many. No, oops. Actually, sorry. I have the wrong cable. Yeah, that's not even a cool break. Physical layer problem. <laughs> I have the wrong cable. I should be on the white. I should be on the white cable. Sorry. If only they had the Spiron uh, I test. Automate this step. <laughs> No, no, uh, it should be. Yeah. All right, so, um, you know what, I'll show you this at launch. The, I, I, what, we're running into problems with the, uh, essentially because it's the same IP address. Uh, the browser is doing some weird caching. But IE is actually not configured here with all the weird. Uh, let me try if it'll let me. And I can't get the image. There we go. Hey. <laughs> so just a caching, caching problem with the browser. Uh, but essentially here, um, I'm now connected to the wine store and I have, it's interesting, I actually did that demo before and I had the same issue, but I thought I'd fix it with the um, cl clearing the cache of the browser. But uh, next time I'll actually use two separate laptops. <laughs> but you got the idea here. Essentially, we have a working, uh, it's actually a Working configuration here, where uh, we've got multiple VRF instances across inexpensive entry-level switches, and uh, essentially for that mall, that is going to cost uh, the the cost of, of of the equipment at the edge is going to be about half the price of what it would be if they had to buy high-end layer three switches, uh, you know, for every uh, edge port. So, so how would you up 
upstream this to an internet connection because you have overlapping IP addresses, which to me, there seems like we need MPLS to something upstream or we need to do network address translation in your equipment. Yeah, we need, we need a NAT a firewall to actually, uh, for the entire mall to actually go and connect to the, the outside world, to the, to the internet. Uh, you would need a NAT firewall. So I don't believe, is, 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 is yeah. I don't believe we do NATing in those VRF instances. So if we yeah, don't do NATing in those, those <laughs> VRF instances, how, how does the, the NAT firewall yeah. identify the different addresses because they're going to see overlapping mm -hmm. address ranges unless we have MPLS or something to you tag? Would, you would connect it to a separate, I mean, the NAT firewall will actually be a separate physical unit, yeah. right? And it would be physically connected. I understand yeah. that, but those IP addresses that, that we're presenting to that NAT firewall are overlapping between the tenants. You're, you're building isolated IGPs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem. Okay, okay. so you're completely, yeah. so, so you're basically building an 802.1Q trunk up to the firewall with different... That. So we also support the GRE tunneling. So, so you can tunnel yeah. these packets yeah. over the public. So for example, like take a typical yeah. federal yeah. intelligence yeah. where they have all right. these, so they, there's a central yeah. location, yeah. or even a satellite yeah. office kind of thing where mm -hmm. you have your part of the network, that same VRS network at the corporate and another at the satellite office, between the and just share the same routing table between them. But in order to connect them, you can have a GRE tunnel, which is more in the public service provider domain. Okay. So you can still get the same overlapping IP addresses in these different VRFs and still connect them through a public GRE tunnels overall. So a GRE gets you the MPLS for an IP domain in some sense. Okay, so so in, in that vein of thought, what, what do you typically see this connected to as an upstream G to, to terminate that GRE tunnel? It uh, would be another, similar like one of the ICX boxes on the other end, we support VRF even a standalone or stacking. And you can have all these, the VRF being terminated at the GRE tunnel on the other side where after you do the the decap of the packet, you can still do the VRF lookup of that packet and forward to the destinations. Okay, so so basically, we're saying that we're fanning that out somewhere else for the internet to yes. connection to come from that remote position it's fanned out from. Yes, so I would say this is one of the use cases for VRF. The other most common ones we see is just mostly for traffic segregation within the same campus. Mm -hmm. You there, people generally don't use overlapping IP addresses, but they still want to have separate VRFs for vendor networks, for your own engineering and other networks. And then you can have some shared VRF concept which is already there, where you can have like all the corporate printers and everything in one VRF, and you do selective route leaking between those VRFs, mm -hmm. so that you can still get to the, those printers, but within the VRFs, your traffic is isolated. Nobody can access your resources. Actually, we have a large university client that is doing, they want completely separate and, and isolated traffic for security cameras, uh, VOIP, uh, student and staff. Right? So they have essentially four uh, virtual networks on a single physical network infrastructure. Uh, and this is where they're using VRF because they really want separate instances to route the traffic uh, between subnets for security cameras and, and subnet for like, VOIP you know, or student access. In that case, you do not have overlapping IP addresses, but you still want VRF. But with these use cases, you explain why you got MPLS on the roadmap. Wouldn't this expedite implementation? Like you've already, you've got. It comes back to what we said before. <laughs> you're, these use cases, you're diverting around MPLS, yeah. and it's not going in the long term. If I was to buy this today and use it when it comes out quarter next year, I'm going to do some poor design choices to try and avoid. I can't use MPLS right away. And then when MPLS comes out, I have to rearchitect. That's a sort of tripping up once the four two steps back and then we're back to start square one. Yeah. It's just an interesting point of view that you yeah. I don't know, I'm not the only one who really thinks that, but we heard you uh, you yeah. <laughs> you yeah. it, it, it can do it can do what it says, great. But yeah. it's yeah. just the MPLS is a rather large so today we have MPLS yeah. on high-end routers, but uh, yeah. not yet yeah. on, on stackable switches. MPLS is hard to do in silicon because okay. you actually have to separate the forwarding tables. Yes. So what they want, what you want to do is ship the switches today so you can start rolling them out mm -hmm. or yeah. put them on the strategy mm -hmm. and then deploy the separation. So Cisco does the same thing. They yeah. announced the next okay. 7,000 with no MPLS. It took them four years to ship MPLS and then it's a 7,000. It took okay. them four years That's to it. finish the meetings to agree to let them ship MPLS. Okay, well I'm saying since ship. You know, we yeah. promised okay. we'd send to ship three or four years ago, right? But even today the MPLS code's not stable. So, you know, don't get all 
bent out of shape. Oh, about. I just didn't know. Yeah. I'm not. I'm just it's interesting. That we're discussing ways to get around a lack of a feature, and then yeah, yeah. maybe not the best way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Greg. No, I mean again, yeah. MPI is not enough. Yeah, no, that's good that it is. Yeah. I'm sure you guys are doing that. Most, most yeah. vendors aren't committing to that, so yeah. uh, that's that's big. Yeah. 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 Because you're, in a sense, you're cannibalizing to some degree your big chassis that's traditionally sat at yeah. the PE. Mm -hmm. So, it's good. Yeah. I think, because the last time I worked at a big site, you know, and I had a site which had like a thousand switches in various cabin, cabins around the place, I couldn't mix and match them. You'd pull out a 24 port and put in a 48 port, and then you'd have a 24 port switch that sat in a cupboard until you did just a decade later. But this idea of being able to clip them around this place as you needed to, you know, is a bit different mm -hmm. in that, you know, like a 3750 stack is always 3750s, you can't mix your different models up. So there's some chance that you can <coughs> retain some of that lost investment over time. Yeah, actually. And you're still tied to a proprietary stack. And yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Ethernet. Yeah, so on that point, for yeah. example, I mean, since we are talking about Cisco here, when they do stacking, as you know, with even within the 3K stacking, it's a proprietary, it's a proprietary cable that is 10X the cables that you see in the market. And there's no way you can connect the 3K to the 2Ks in a single physical stack because the stacking cables are different, the mechanisms are very different. Developed so the beauty video. of mix and match is that you can have you know, stacking across different platforms, which is very unique. And you know, again, the primary anchor point is simplified manageability. That will be moving forward the main thing from how your paid switches are different from So I guess you know our time is up. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share this technology. We are excited. Yep. Um, it's coming up in spring, and as you can see, it's demoed. It's real. Uh, it Works. Definitely will be delivering. <laughs> 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 right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.